Number one, Northren Quests. Starting things off with a more general topic, Northrend as a whole is a pretty disturbing place. Obviously the landscape is set perfectly with the depressing backdrops in Lich King storyline, but a lot of the quests are creepy or downright disturbing. To give a few examples, the quest, Rescuing the Rescuers at the beginning of Howling Fjord, as Alliance players saving scouts who were impaled and left for dead by the rampaging Vrykhul. Also, there is Parachutes for the Urgent Crusade, a quest in Zuldrak where players are tasked with saving crusaders who are being grabbed by gargoyles and dropped to their deaths. Not only is it a morbid quest, but the screams of the fallen crusaders as you do the quest continually remind you of how messed up World of Warcraft can get. Number 2. First Mate Fitzsimmons Quest Chain this quest starts out normally enough having Alliance players in Menethil Harbor do a fetch quest for First Mate Fitzsimmons. After you complete that short quest, he talks about how he's the sole survivor of the Third Fleet of Kul Taras and that he's haunted day and night by his crewmate, First Mate Snellig. After you go talk to First Mate Snellig and complete a kill quest, he talks about how their captain damned the crew with an artifact called the Cursed Eye of Peleth. You then have to kill the undead captain, retrieve the artifact, and get it to a safe place to stop their suffering. When this is done, you're sent back to the inn and told that Glorin Steelbrow could purge the corrupted item. However, after approaching Glorin, he talks about how the cursed eye Peleth was already cleansed long ago, the curse lifted, and that Fitzsimmon has been dead for nearly a year already. Glorin ends the story with, don't ask me what you actually brought me. You're better off forgetting this ever happened. Then after you go back outside, you see that Fitzsimmon is no longer there. Number three, Rona Greenteeth and the Dark Moon Fair Ghosts. During the monthly Dark Moon Fair event on Dark Moon Island, an undead NPC named Rona Greenteeth can be found west of the main fairgrounds. At first glance, she's just a normal food vendor, until you realize the food she sells is made of the other races in Azeroth. Also, when you die in Dark Moon Island, several ghosts can be found roaming the area. Though there is no direct distinction that they run as victims, some of the ghosts mention eerie things that give you hints as to how they died, showing that even the Dark Moon Fair has strange secrets throughout. Number 4. Kultira's Fate During the Cataclysm expansion, Endoral became a war zone with the Alliance, Horde, and Scourge fighting for dominion over the fallen city. The Alliance being led by Thessarion and the Horde being led by Kultira Deathweaver eventually help the player and they agree on a momentary retreat to meet in battle later, much to the displeasure of the undead NPC Lindsay Ravensun. After the Horde defeats the Alliance and captures Endoral, it's revealed that Lindsay Ravensun was actually Sylvanas in disguise, and her seeing Kultira's weakness for her former ally causes Sylvanas to have Kultira punished. A portal then opens with an abomination chain wrapping around Kultira's neck. Sylvanas then talks about getting rid of the fear in Kultira as he's dragged through the portal into the Undercity. For me, this remains one of WoW's biggest mysteries, especially since we haven't seen Kultira since this event that took place two expansions ago. Hopefully, in Legion, we'll find out what happened to Kultira after Sylvanas' assumed brainwashing. Number 5. Dr. Weevil Alkez Island is a place that lived in infamy starting in Vanilla WoW all the way to Wrath of the Lich King. Let's start with the island's location. It being off the coast of Dustwallow Marsh, a level 35 to 40 zone, when the mobs in Alkez ranged from level 59 to 63 elites, it was definitely a surprising moment to any would-be explorers who ventured out there. Onto the island itself. It consists of two decrepit encampments overrun with elite naga and drakes. 
and one encampment lies in Nome, Dr. Weevil and his servants. While the servants themselves aren't a huge threat, Dr. Weevil has an insane amount of health, hits hard, and most of all has mind domination. Dr. Weevil could mind control you for up to two minutes, then even after the initial mind control, if you couldn't get away quick enough, you would get teleported back and get caught in a mind control loop indefinitely which kept some unlucky players as a servant for hours at a time. Also, the mind control players dealt extra damage, causing them to kill their group very quickly if unprepared. Nowadays, he hardly poses a threat, and Alkaz Island is usually farmed over by high-level players. But even up until Cataclysm, Dr. Weevil had over 700,000 health, and still has the mind domination ability to this day. Number 6. The Unseen At Raven Hill, there are buildings behind the initial encampment when you first enter. They are left broken and uninhabited. This is because of invisible spirits called the Unseen that attack you when provoked. While Duskwood is at level 20 to 25 area, these spirits are around level 50 and attack the player when using an AoE attack in any of the buildings. What makes this all the more startling is that there isn't much warning to when you're being attacked. It shows you're in combat, but you can't see what's attacking you or selected, and your character doesn't respond to any damage, but their health starts lowering fast, and obviously caught me off guard while recording this. Overall, this tops our list because it's an interesting subtle bit of lore that explains why no one tries to fix or inhabit the buildings on Raven Hill. Also, it surprised me to find something so cleverly and eerily hidden in the game. It took me doing research for this video to find out why my paladin back in Vanilla WoW randomly died while using the Consecration ability near Raven Hill Cemetery. This is Two Tanks Niagara. If you uh, like this video, you want to see more, comment and uh, subscribe. If you just you know like us pieces of trash. Uh, in the left hand corner is the uh, annotation for DLBT Drunk Like Bible Times, our comedy web series. On the right side is Zilla or ZLA. Um, he did the music for this video. The several songs in there. Also on the bottom left, there's Sam Googleplexian, who did a uh, voiceover in this video as well. Check out his shit, he does gaming stuff as well. And uh, thanks to Luke and Maddie for uh, helping out with the video. So yeah, two tanks no aggro, uh, whatever.